I'm more focused in on acting these few months than um, uh, modeling. Right. So I'll, I'm gonna try to be present as much as I can, but we'll see how it goes. Hello and welcome to the May Man Show. We are coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have a special guest who is a doctor turned model, Rahaf Al Harbi. Thank you very much for taking the time to be in our studios here. Thank you for having me. And uh, Rahaf, let's 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 start with uh, your latest endeavors as a as a model. So you have uh, you participated in the Miss Europe Continental contest in Napoli. So can you tell us a little bit about this experience? Okay. So last year I took part in an international beauty pageant called Miss Europe Con Continental. Mm -hmm. It's a beauty pageant that has contestants from three continents, right. Europe, Asia, and Africa. And uh, I took part as a first Saudi. Yeah. And how did this opportunity uh, present itself? I've always um, dreamed of taking part of something like that. And it, it was really interesting for me. I heard about or read about um, this competition. I saw the rules and regulations and the um, criteria you needed to take part. Mm -hmm. So I asked them if I could apply. And obviously in the beginning, they um, refused. They didn't accept me because to apply on an international level, mm -hmm. you should have first a regional or a local level. Okay. So you like experience. All right. Uh, but obviously, because we don't have that in Saudi, um, I didn't have any experience. Okay. I explained that to them. Um, we went back and forth with the emails, and um, I explained my situation until mm -hmm. they finally accepted me. All right. So, like, where there's a will, there's there's a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, through that process, you know, what were um, you know some of the major changes that you've you've had uh after taking part of the you know in the of the show in this competition um other than um, being uh, being recognized um i think i was taken more seriously mm -hmm. in the beauty or fashion industry All right. um which gave me the opportunity to work with uh great people great designers photographers magazines and mm -hmm. make a name for myself all right, and and who approached you uh, for for collaboration? Like, we, uh, can you give me some some names of, of magazines or brands? Um, or I did the cover of Hia magazine in um, in April for the Ramadan issue, and it was the heritage cover. Right. So we had uh, Henna. We were shooting in the desert. Uh, the Fashion Commission. I was working with them. For like, but what what uh, projects were you doing with the Fashion Commission? We were doing photo shoots, we were doing collaborations, we were having um, discussions about upcoming um, fashion shows because, you know, there's going to be Real Fashion Week similar to Milan Fashion Week and um, Paris Fashion Week. All right. And are you gonna, do, do you plan on having a big presence in, in the upcoming Fashion Week? Um, honestly, I'm more focused in on acting these few months than um, uh, modeling. Right. So I'll, I'm going to try to be present as much as I can, but we'll see how it goes. You'll see how it goes. Well, let's 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 uh, talk about your your acting career a bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how long have you been, you know, did you, uh, you know, start acting? Uh, I've done uh, two shows, mm -hmm. two series already, and I'm going to start shooting my third one in October. All right. And um, what's what's your uh, new project that you're going to be working on? What is it called? Or you're not at liberty to say no, it? No, no, no. They don't know the name yet. They don't know the name yet. Do you yeah. know the synopsis they at had, least? They had a name and then they changed it. So it usually happens. They have like many options and then they change. So we're going to start shooting in October. Mm -hmm. And um, it was going to be called Feiruz because my character and the show is Feiruz. But they changed it last minute. So I don't know yet. All right. Okay, that's interesting. And and uh, can you tell us a little bit about the previous projects that you were working that you uh, that you acted in? 
I did um, a show, مسلسل إسماعيل نوف. It's based on a true story. اللي هي خاطفة الدمام. Everyone knew it on social media. Um, I think 2018, everyone knew the story. And um, like I mentioned, it was based on a true story, and everyone was really shocked when they knew the truth how a lady kidnapped kids from the nursery and mm-hmm. she released them after 20 years. So I did that um, two years ago. Right. And it got nominated for Joy Awards last year, alhamdulillah. Right. It didn't win, but at least it got At least it got nominated. All right. And uh, how did you feel knowing that you were part of a project that was nominated for a Joy Award? Because it was my first experience at Kid, I was I was really shocked and surprised. Also, the entire cast were really shocked because they were all um, new names. They okay. weren't big stars. Right. But unfortunately, it didn't make it and it didn't win, but any. Yeah, still got nominated yeah. and but you know usually if you have like a lot of hungry unknowns there's a certain raw performance that you would get out of a big star a big star or an established yeah. actor so you know that i think that mix maybe also had a played a, a phenomenal role in, in it being nominated i mean they played really or replayed really hard parts uh-huh. like imagine you have to play a part that you're kidnapped in yeah. and then we went to Taif and we were shooting there It was like really, really scary and something new for all of us. But I think that's why we all gave um, a really good performance. Right. Did you do any research for the role? Yeah, we spoke to one of the detectives that was with the case, okay. the real case, and he explained to us a couple of details we should um, keep in mind to give more right. in the role. Aside from you know just focusing a bit more on, on your acting career, uh and you know going back to your experience you know um modeling um what ambitions do you hope to achieve you know like in your next step from you know to in in the modeling realm in each field i have goals let's say for the beauty field um i i have one more goal that i want to reach and then after that i think i'm going to be done okay um i want to take part in the in Miss Universe, which is the most elite and the biggest um, beauty pageant in the world. Uh-huh. That's for the beauty. And for modeling, I think I've reached the full potential in Saudi. Okay. You know, because we don't have runway here. So after photo shoots and magazine covers, there is not much more you can do. So it's going to become like a routine. It's going to be repetitive. Yeah. And you don't strike me as a person who likes repetitive. No. You like yeah. new challenges every yeah. day, right? And, uh, you know, since you're talking about photo shoots and magazines, uh, what campaigns or collaborations are you proud of that you've already, you know, uh, done? I mean, that's a hard one because I've worked with many great talented people and it's unfair just to mention a few. Mm-hmm. But there are like a couple that I think that I will cherish the memory of them forever. So last March, I attended um, the Saudi Cup. Right. You know, which is the most uh, prestigious and expensive horse race in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple, a couple of my photos went viral. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw it. Mine didn't go viral. <laughs> <laughs> you should have uh, went with the same designer. Yeah, who is your designer? Her name is Pavani. She works with um, uh, Fashion Commission. Sound All right. Commission. So was was yours the wild right. outfit? No, 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 I wasn't that. Okay, well, what was yours? I was wearing uh, a white uh, cloak. Okay. Uh, it represented Al Hassa mm-hmm. because the designer is from Hassa. All right. And it was made from natural silk and natural pearls because uh, that represents Hassa. And it's called Lina. Mm-hmm. Um, Lina is the small palm tree. All right. Lino Al Hassa, it's known as Medinat Al Million Nakhla. Yes. Yeah. So she got inspired by her Hasawi heritage. Okay. And made this cloak as Hasawi piece. All right. So it's the to translate what you said, the land of a million palm trees. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was uh, I was wearing an uh, an outfit by Kormuz, if, if you okay. know the designer. Yeah, he was yes. the one with uh, the one flying, who did. Uh, 
Yeah, he's he, yes, he, he that's yes, he has the design that one with the flying pigeons. That's yeah. exactly. I thought that was a pretty wild, uh, yeah. wild uh, design. You know, Saudi cup is is supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be something you can wear every day. Yeah, it's supposed to be like you know. Sometimes you see pieces on the runway mm -hmm. that you can't actually wear, but it's just for show. All right, and yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with you. That's that's why why it's one of these must uh, attend fashion events other yeah. than just attending the races where it's everyone... like the Met Gala, but in like our way. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So aside from you know your experience in modeling and being an actress you have a degree in general medicine and surgery and uh so how did you basically um go from medicine to transcend into like entertainment and you know, yeah, yeah. fashion so i come um, from a family that most of my uh, cousins or uncles are uh, doctors mm -hmm. so it's just in the family you know it runs through families and it was just expected of me to somehow end up being a doctor all right and it wasn't something outrageous or abnormal to our family halas everyone in our family studies medicine really okay yeah um but and I didn't think of anything else, Aslan. So I had nothing in mind. So I just went for it. Mm -hmm. um, modeling, I started doing it as part-time while studying because it was something that okay, that was really interesting for me. What was the interesting aspect? Like what caught your attention? How people change the way they look with makeup and clothes. And then they have this amazing photos and then they Photoshop the background. You know, it was just so interesting. It's like an art form in, yeah. uh, or a, an a outlet for creativity. Especially like when you see creative stuff, how they do it. It was just really interesting. So I started modeling here in Saudi in mm -hmm. 2016 and while studying at the same time. All right. And uh, did, did you pr do you practice medicine? Yeah. I finished my internship in 2021. All right. And um, I started working just a few months back. Mm -hmm. And so now I work a, a part-time job and I have three or four photo shoots a week. Okay. I think it's all about time management. All right. I work from 8 until 3 p.m. And oh. then photo shoots are very flexible. Okay. So me and the team, we sit down, we agree on a day and um, time that suits us all. Mm -hmm. And um, usually a shoot is only one to three hours. So it doesn't take that much time. It's just like going to the gym. If I have a full day shoot, mm -hmm. we'll do it on the weekend. All right. But that's okay. So that's like for photo shoots. But what about acting? Okay. I've never had um, that that this problem before acting and working, mm -hmm. but you know, acting isn't um, a full time, full year job. It's uh, seasonal, so yeah. actors don't act the entire year. If they have a show coming up, they shoot for two months full time, All right. and then ten months they're free. Um, I think I'm gonna take a leave from everything and shoot for two months, and then I'll go back to my routine. All right. Okay, well, let me know how that works. And uh, who who had the most influence uh, in your career? You know, either from a professional perspective or from a personal perspective, because you know you've taken quite the journey from medicine in to modeling to acting. You must you must have had support. You know, I think being a mother with a full time job is harder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm I'm I have a job. I have a part-time job All right. and at the same time I have photo shoots like let's say 10 hours a week mm -hmm. so if you divide it by day it's you can manage it's yeah. like going to the gym okay. anyway who had the most influence on my career um I don't think there's a specific one person but uh I think my parents believed in me a lot yeah and that gave me so much confidence in myself and belief All right uh and there's a, there's a motivational speaker that i love and i admire he touched me so much especially during covid because we were in lockdown mm -hmm. and i was studying for my final exams i used to watch his videos all the time and i know most of his videos by heart yeah. his name is jim ron okay he's an american um, motivational speaker right. and you know 
maybe the things he says, other speakers say, but sometimes there's like someone gives you the sends you the message in a specific way that touches you. Their de his delivery was different. Yeah. So I think this was a turning point in my life. COVID, watching his videos, I was going through my final exams. I was yeah. obviously depressed. Everyone was depressed in COVID. We were locked down. I had a final surgery exam. It was Ramadan and it couldn't get any worse. All right. I was a frontline journalist during COVID. Okay. So I, I, I felt you like- You were going I, out. You were having fun. I wasn't having fun. I felt like I was out and I was, you seen, did you ever see the Will Smith movie, I Am Legend? Yeah. So I felt like I was Will Smith and I Am Legend, just like- an, I mean, I'm, I think everyone envied you because you were going out. Well, there wasn't really much to do. You just go out and you look at checkpoints and see really? how, how everyone's managing the, you know, crisis response for COVID. But other than that, it wasn't a social, uh, like if you go to King, if I have a picture where King Fad Highway Freeway, which is a busy freeway in Riyadh is completely empty. So that's, I've never seen that. And I don't, that is I don't sad. see it again. Yeah. So that's, that's what I, that's the views that I saw on a daily basis, basically. And I, I just thought it was eerie, kind of. And um, so you've mentioned before that, you know, you, you believe in the law of attraction. So what does it mean to you? Law of attraction is a big subject, yeah. but in simple words, it means um, believing, in, believing in God, believing in yourself, yeah. um, setting a goal, and then after that, everything you want in life mm -hmm. is going to come to you. That's what it means. Yeah. Believe God, believe in yourself, set a goal, and it's going to come to you. All right. And I promise if you do the, these simple steps, mm -hmm. there is nothing you can't achieve. All right. And I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I personally... You know. I mean, because it's so simple, people take it for granted. They think that, oh, it can't be that simple, but I swear it's that simple. I, I mean, there is there's also like Bruce Lee has a saying is uh, don't speak negatively about yourself because even, you know, if you speak negatively about yourself, then you'll basically uh, manifest. Because, you know, your subconscious mind doesn't know if you're joking or you're saying the truth. It's like yeah. a sponge. It absorbs mm -hmm. everything that's put in it. So I would never, ever, ever speak negative to myself. Yes. But then I've never, I hate when people speak negative to, the, mm -hmm. to themselves. It irritates me when I see someone speaking like that. Yeah. Do, do, you, uh, do you have like something you say to pep yourself up or motivate yourself? Like, is there a saying? I listen to affirmations while yeah. I sleep. Okay. There are um, apps, but you can find it on YouTube too. Okay. Eight hours affirmations mm -hmm. for health, for wealth, for happiness, for love, for anything you can imagine. I just play it and go to sleep. All right. I mean, I start my day with a, with a quote, you know. I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Okay, so but you know, it's really good to listen to something while you're sleeping because yeah. your brain goes into alpha waves, mm -hmm. which is before deep sleep, which is the state of um, deep, deep rest. Yeah. And it absorbs anything that's put into it. So if you want to focus on something, try this. Well, that's interesting you say that because I actually listen to audiobooks before I sleep. Like I, I, I need to uh, listen to someone speak mm. to feel calm and go to sleep. Why but you listen to something that's gonna improve your life. Well, audiobooks do improve your life. You haven't asked me what type of audiobooks I'm listening to. So, I mean, like, well, well the ones I listen to are fictional, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can, there are audiobooks, <laughs> you know, nice. yes, are, you know, like that teach you things like how to basically, I don't know, write a script or how to be in a movie or how to be a model. <laughs> I mean, does it benefit you? Uh, listening, well, me, because I do two jobs, you're not the only one who, you know, dabbles in different things and each one ha has a demanding pace of absorbing and digesting information. So I do believe that information is just like eating food. You need your appetizer, your main course and your dessert. So that's my dessert. <laughs> so that's, that's how I see it. And, um, Aside from, you know, like uh, basically the 
being a firm believer of law of the laws of attraction you know you you're you spent some time living in the US and the UK and you know and also here in Saudi so h- how did this experience shape who you are today so um i came back to saudi 10 years ago when i was 17 mm-hmm. and i think one of the main things that make i think one of the main things that um living abroad taught me was yeah. how to appreciate and be grateful for my circumstances to my circumstances mm-hmm. um us as saudis and my country and the privileges we have yeah. i mean look at the healthcare systems you get healthcare for free the education systems and covid was the proof yeah and- another point that um I think living abroad made me realize is the family bonds. Mm-hmm. I really, really cherish the family bonds and I appreciate them. Uh, the generosity of people, how nice people are, the safety we have here in Saudi, alhamdulillah. You know that uh, also here, you it's <clears throat> um, health, education and health is not uh it's it's not a privilege it's actually a, a basic commi- human need it's it's a it's a commitment right. yeah, yeah to to the citizen or you know whoever you know like the the people here which is not really uh the case in other parts of the world and also um it's like a lot of the guests that come on the show who've lived in different countries uh i've had a uh, actually a guest who has uh on my show a couple of seasons ago, who is a rapper from California who moved his whole family here because mm-hmm. he said the quality of life here is safer than in, than in the U.S. And that's something that not a lot of people, uh, well, a lot of people here would take for granted until they live in in, in you know different environments. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what what part of of uh, be you know like aside from family values, I guess and in Saudi and security and education. What part did you cher- like miss or cherish the most when you were abroad? I think I missed most family gatherings and mm-hmm. uh, occasions. I miss the food, obviously. Yeah. Even though I'm not a big fan of food. Okay. I love food. <laughs> I do, but I don't, not that much, Saraha. Anyway. Yeah. There is something that every time I travel and come back, uh, I miss a lot. Salt al adhan honestly, yeah. mm-hmm. the call of prayer, um, especially like in winter when we're sitting outside, and I hear it. it I think it brings so much calmness. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's soothing and it's yeah. nice to hear. You know, I I also that's one thing I miss when I'm like in in the U.S. or is is the fact that you don't hear that then. Um, so. Who who is your role model growing up? Um, I look up to my parents a lot. Yeah, I mean they they were bo- both um, orphans from a really young age, mm-hmm. and um, they didn't have like let's say the best circumstances. Okay, they worked um, really hard in tough situa- situations. Um, so I think I learned a lot from them mm-hmm. about determination and um, not to give up. Okay. Especially my mother. She mm-hmm. is so strong, but at the same time, all the bitter circumstances mm-hmm. didn't make her less sensitive or less of a person. She has the biggest heart in the world, and she really inspires me. Okay. That's okay. And uh, so when, you know, when you're not a doctor and you're not trying your hand in acting or being in the fashion and uh, fashion industry as a model what do you do for fun what do i do for fun yeah so when um i travel but i try to go to um exotic locations all right um at the same time when when i'm here in saudi i learned this from um, the speaker i told you about jim ron is to learn as many skills as you can. Okay. 
one that pays you money, one that keeps you healthy, I think one that keeps you fit or something mm -hmm. like that. So um, now I'm practicing learning the piano. I took 24 lessons already and it just, it's not working any. Yani. I'm still really? not that good, yeah. yeah. I took 24 lessons and I'm horse riding. Okay, and how's that going? Is it going as good as well as the piano? I don't know. It's yeah. just not, <laughs> I'm not a sports person, I think. Okay, wow, you can still ride for fun. I've been practicing now for like six months, horse riding and piano for like a year and a half. And okay. I'm still not seeing any results yet. All right. Well, if it's, what's your guilty pleasure then? Like, I like to watch movies, you know, so movies is, is, is not something that's learning a new skill, but it's, it's, still, it's a pastime. Obviously, I love to watch Netflix. Yeah. And um, what's your favorite like Netflix series that you can just put on? I think I finished them all, but um, I like you know a, a, a certain type of um, movies. I like um, uh, psychological thrillers. Oh, nice! So you need you need to watch an old movie called Identity. I think I watched that. Yeah. John, I really really John like John Cusack. Yeah, I have I have a couple of movies, psychological thrillers. They really mess up my head. If I watch them for a couple of days, I'm like paranoid. Yeah, okay, it makes you think, right? Well, before we wrap up this this interview, um, is there a personal message you'd like to send to the Arab News and May Man Show audience? Um, I mean, if I could tell people one thing, especially the young generation. I would tell them not to give up on their dreams, mm -hmm. to go for it, because if someone can do it, so can you. Yeah. If you want a certain life, if you want a certain job, certain position, just watch how the person before you did it. Mm -hmm. Copy their steps, learn from their mistakes, or take your own approach. All right. And if there's no one that's done it before, try to see people who have done similar things how they did it mm -hmm. and um you can achieve anything you want when you set your mind to it all right yeah i mean that's... there's nothing that's not achievable when you believe in yourself i swear to god yeah. there's nothing you can't achieve i i agree with you and then my, my you know to add to, to what you're saying my, my my philosophy is if you're gonna dream you dream big and if you're gonna do something go big or go home just don't don't do it all and uh, on that note, I would like to thank you very much for taking time to be in our studios for this episode. And I'd like to wish you nothing but the best of success in your future endeavors. And uh, thanks again for being here. Thank you, Hassan, for having me. Thank you for my man show and your team. It was a pleasure and I hope to see you in the next season. All right, cool. And uh, stay tuned to the one and only May Man Show. See you later.